Hello, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT. Dominate the GMAT is a leading provider of on-demand video-based test preparation for the GMAT to help students get into business school. What you're about to see is a segment from a full lesson from one of our courses. If you like what you see, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for not only this full lesson, but other course offerings as well. For now, enjoy your free session. So in this example, it says for which of the following functions is f of a plus b, so that's the whole input, a plus b, going to be equal to the individual function a plus the individual function b for all positive numbers a and b. Well, and that's kind of weird, right? Now it's got x's in the answer choice as well. I'll let you try to figure that out, sort it out on your own, see how you do, and then we'll come back and do this together. Go ahead and press pause and see how you do. All right, how'd you do with this problem? It can be a little bit difficult to get your mind around, but let's kind of leave the answer choices for now and just try to get our mind around what's going on up here. And I said we can maybe use one of our non-standard math techniques, right? Instead of working completely in the abstract, there is an algebraic solution to this question, but we want to outthink the test makers, right? Wouldn't it be nice if, remember that strategy? Wouldn't it be nice if, instead of dealing with A's and B's and all of this stuff, what if we just had real numbers, right? What if A equals, I don't know, you can let A be whatever you want and B be whatever you want. Let's let A equal 1 and B equal 1. There's actually no reason that the variables have to be different numbers. So here's what it's really saying. For which functions is it the case that, and here's how we internalize it, remember our conveyor belt, f of a plus b, well a plus b is actually 1 plus 1 which is 2, so here's what it's really asking. For which function is it going to be the case that f of 2, where so 2 is the input coming along the conveyor belt, is going to be the same thing as the function when the number 1 is the input, just a alone, plus the function when the, no, the letter b, in this case the input b, but we've let b equal 1, so the function when the input 1 is also individually calculated and then those two add together. So when is the function where the input is 2 going to each equal that same function when the input is 1 plus that same function when the input is 1. That's what the generic algebraic thing is telling us, but now we have real numbers to work with, and now we can just go through the answer choices and see which one works. That's it. Very, very simple. So let's try it. Okay. So the question is, what is f of 2 going to be in answer choice A? Well, if 2 is the input, right, when it's A plus B, you with me? When 2 is the input, what do we get? Well, it chugs along the conveyor belt and it goes through this function and poof, 2 squared is going to equal 4. Okay, fair enough. That's what f of 2 equals. But now how about f of 1 individually? Well, when f of 1 comes along, or where the input 1 comes along the conveyor belt, right? The input is 1, and it comes along to the conveyor belt to the function, and something magical happens to it. 1 squared is just 1, okay? And then when we do that again and add it to itself, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Does that equal 4? No. So it is not the case that this function is going to satisfy this requirement. It's just not. And we just proved it by using real numbers. And then we simply go through and do it all the way down the line. Right? Let me do it for answer choice B just to give you an idea. Right? Same thing. We want to do f of 2 first. So the function when the input is 2, as per our rules, is going to say, OK, 2 comes along. 2 gets input here, we add 1, and poof, we get 3. Okay, is that going to equal f of 1 plus f of 1? Well, let's see what f of 1 is. f of 1 is simply 1 as the input, so it's 1 plus 1 is going to be 2, but I need 2 of them, so f of 1 plus f of 1, so that's 2 plus 2 equals 4. Does that equal 3? No, it doesn't. Therefore, this function isn't going to satisfy that rule. 
I hope you get this. And that's the process you go through all the way down and I'm just going to kind of cheat because I know what the answer is. And I happen to know that it's going to work out when we get down to answer choice E. Let's prove it. What's f of 2? f of 2, well we're going to take the input of 2, that's going to be negative 3 times 2 which is going to be negative 6. Okay? Let's see what happens when we do f of 1 plus f of 1. Well f of 1 is going to be negative 3 times the input 1, it's going to be negative 3. But then we add it back again to another f of 1, so that's plus another negative 3. And a negative plus a negative gets more negative, that's negative 6. Ah, look at that. Negative 6 does equal negative 6. That means f of 2 does equal f of 1 plus f of 1. Which means the general rule here, the general function rule with variables, will also hold the answer is E. Hello again. Hopefully you found the information in that segment helpful. If you did, just imagine how much you would learn in the full lesson, or better yet, the full course. If you like what you saw, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for our full course offerings. So thanks for watching and go out and dominate the GMAT.